That guy upstairs. I don't know what his problem is. Some people say he's a psycho. I don't know. I try not to make judgments. People in glass houses and all that. As long as he keeps to himself and does nobody any harm, then let him be. That's what I say. I can't be prying into people's private lives. I mean, how would I feel if he came down in here and started hammering on my door? No. It's best to leave well enough alone. Sure he's harmless, isn't he? There's a man living downstairs. I don't like him. He's too quiet. That's his problem. People say he's nice and harmless. Then they give me funny looks. As if it were me who was the psycho. I've called the police on him before. But they do nothing. He's got dirt on someone important. That's why the police never do anything. I'd put money on it. The guy upstairs makes a lot of noise. That's the only complaint I'd make. At weird times. He hoovers his apartment at 5am. But I don't know. Maybe he's a germaphobe or something. There's always a lot of banging coming from up there. Like something solid and heavy hitting the floorboards. Maybe he's training to be a juggler. Or he could be a dancer. I don't know. Maybe I should ask one day. I'd love to learn to juggle. There are noises from downstairs, but they're too soft, too muffled. He probably tried to soundproof the place. I don't like it. I don't trust it. He's too quiet and too soft-spoken, and he brings all this weird shit home with him every day. Old TVs and video players and bits of broken mannequins and furniture. One time, he came home with half a surfboard. He's up to something. It's 3 a.m. and the guy upstairs is making a lot of noise. More of that banging. I don't know what to do. He woke me up and I'm really tired. Maybe I should go up and talk to him. I'm sure he's a nice guy, really. If I explain I have a lot of work to do today, I'm sure he'll understand. It's just gone half past three in the morning. That psychopath from downstairs was just up here. He came banging on my door, woke me up, and screamed at me for half an hour before shutting himself back in his apartment. I have no idea what he wanted. I could barely even make out what he was screaming at me about. I found a finger in the laundry chute today. It scared the ever-loving shit out of me. I thought about calling the police, but this is a nice place. It's a nice area. This isn't one of those slums where things like that happen all the time. I run a nice place in a nice part of town. This would ruin me. I'm just going to sit on this. The damn thing is in my icebox because I don't know what else to do with it. I mean, what do you do with a severed finger? The guy upstairs has been much quieter lately. I think my talk with him did some good. That's nice. I knew he had to be a good person. I should tell him thank you sometime. Maybe order him a pizza, just to be nice. Our landlord seems really stressed lately. I hope things are okay for him. I think I'll pay next month's rent a week in advance. Maybe that will make things easier for him. He hasn't left his apartment in a week. I've been watching. 
there's sounds of drilling and hammering coming from his room, but muffled and muted like always. He's building something. He's got to be. There's something wrong with the landlord, too. He's been edgy, tense. That psycho downstairs probably threatened him, too. I should talk to him. Maybe if we went to the police together, we could finally get something done. I've got three fingers and a foot in my freezer box. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what's going on, but I want it to stop. This is a nice place. The guy in 48A keeps giving me weird looks. I don't know what his problem is. He's always creeped me out. Maybe it's him doing it. It could be him. Should I tell the police? Is it too late? Ah, oh, shit, would I be implicated? Oh, I don't know. I've been seeing the guy upstairs a lot lately. He hangs around on my floor a lot, just pacing. I don't think he has many friends. I think he might be kind of shy. Maybe I should invite him in for coffee sometime. Our landlord still seems really worried. He mutters to himself a lot. I think it must be family problems. People only get that worried when it's family problems. The man from downstairs keeps smiling at me. He knows I'm watching him. He knows I know he's doing something. He's taunting me. That arrogant son of a bitch thinks he can get away with whatever it is he's doing. I need to make my move with the landlord. He's been talking to himself in the hallways. He won't look anybody in the eye. He seems to be avoiding this part of the building. I need to talk to him before he's too scared to do anything about the man downstairs. I have a foot and almost a whole arm. I don't know who's doing this. I think it's all from the same person. So I guess that's not so bad. If it's just one person, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. As long as it's just one person. I can do that. Somebody sent me a pizza last week. And that guy from 48A just keeps staring at me. I don't know why. I asked the man upstairs if he wanted to come in for coffee. He just sneered at me. That was kind of nasty. I thought we were getting along. I don't know. Maybe that's just his way. I sent the landlord a pizza a few days ago. I didn't let him know it was me. I thought it would be a nice surprise for him. I'm not sure if he's a vegetarian, so I just got him a plain cheese pizza. Hopefully he doesn't have any allergies. The guy downstairs tried to lure me into his apartment today. He's not going to catch me out like that. He's not getting rid of me that easily. I'm not going to end up in some dumpster. I'm going to contact the landlord tonight. I know he knows too. He has to. If the guy downstairs tried it on me, he'll try the landlord as well. We have to get rid of this guy. Something has to be done. I don't have room in the freezer box anymore. The room I live in used to be a restaurant. I never got rid of the old meat locker. It's all in there now. Nearly a whole body. I keep finding them when I do the rounds, cleaning the place, fixing things. I think someone wants for me to find them. 
It's the guy in 48A. It, it, it has to be. I found an envelope shoved under my door. Somebody wants to meet me. I think the man upstairs is watching me. I don't think I like it. Why won't he leave me alone? I only wanted to be nice. I don't like the way he smiles at me. It's making me nervous. I, I keep making mistakes. I have so much work to do and I keep making mistakes. I can't keep making mistakes. I should talk to the landlord about it, but I don't want to add to his troubles. It's been over a month since Linda left me. Maybe I'm not handling it well. Maybe I'm taking it out on people who don't deserve it. Maybe the man downstairs is doing nothing wrong and I'm just being paranoid. I don't know. The landlord never met with me. Maybe he didn't get my note. Maybe it's better that way. I don't know. Her body is almost whole. There's only a few pieces left, but her heart is missing. I've been putting her back together in the old meat locker. I don't know why. Maybe it's just less creepy than having human meat piled up in here. I don't know. She was pretty. Her heart is missing. I think I want to find the rest of her. I need to find her heart. I wish I knew what she used to be like. The man upstairs just lurks in the hall outside my apartment, just staring at me. I peeked out through the peephole, and he was just staring at the door. I swear he could see me looking through the peephole from all the way across the hall. I tried to complain to the landlord, but he won't speak to me. He won't speak to anyone. I think the man upstairs might be intimidating him. I need to get back to work. I need to keep working. The guy downstairs must be nearly finished. I haven't seen him bring home materials in over two weeks. I've been keeping notes. I was wrong when I was thinking maybe he hadn't done anything. I was feeling weak. Guess I was missing Linda. He's got the landlord under his thumb completely, just like he does the police. I'm thinking of hiring a private detective. Or maybe I'll just kick the door in myself. Something has to be done. She's almost done. My guardian angel looks so beautiful. Even without her heart. So cold and beautiful, hanging on the wall inside the meat locker. Heartless. I bought her a dress and shoes. I think I got the sizing wrong, but it doesn't matter. All we need now is her heart. Maybe I'll find it today. I hope so. I'm tired. The man upstairs spent all night pacing back and forth loudly, stamping his feet. I think I heard him crying. I tried calling the police, but they said they've gotten too many calls from this building that turned out to be nothing. I wonder who called them so many times. This is a nice place. It doesn't matter, I guess. I'm nearly finished. I can't handle this anymore. I can't just sit here and do nothing. I can't just watch. Linda would agree with me. Linda would tell me I'm right. She'd agree. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to go down and I'm going to confront this sicko. Somebody needs to put a stop to whatever it is he's doing down there before he finishes building whatever it is he's building. 
It's been weeks, and I can't find my poor angel's heart. She looks so perfect, but she's empty. I need to find it. I can't wait for the man in 48A to give it to me any more. I can't. I'm going to go and ask him for it. I need to make my angel whole again. She needs it. I'll go and ask him. It's the best way. I need her to be complete. I need it so much. Nobody has any real idea what happened. We got an anonymous tip from somebody in the building. The body was in a meat locker in the landlord's room. His fingerprints were all over it, but they were all clearly post-mortem. Not that he's not still guilty of withholding evidence, and not that he's not still guilty of being really fucking creepy. One of the tenants, uh, an older man, was found in another tenant's room, throttling the, uh, the poor kid with his own belt. The kid was a student at the local art college. We searched the older guy's room and found everything was pretty normal until somebody checked the freezer and found a human heart. We're still waiting to hear back from the lab, but we're all expecting it belongs to the girl in the meat locker. When we finally did find the landlord, he was rocking back and forth in about an inch of dust in an unleased apartment. He was crying for someone to help him finish her. And after seeing the girl, I really don't know if I wanted him to get that help or not. We found him in room 48A. The phone number matches the one our anonymous tipster called from. The police psychologist says the landlord probably snapped and made the call himself. That's probably it. The old man couldn't handle it anymore, and he snapped, and he called us. That has to be it. It happens all the time. Room 48A was written and performed by Stephen Jack Cullen of Hog and Dice Productions, with music by Kevin McLeod. If you have written a story you would like to hear recorded, or want for us to record one of your favourites, then please leave a link in the comments. Thanks for listening. <laughs>